What's up guys, TJ here. So one of the most common issues in snowboarding is heel and toe drag. Usually this happens to people that have a large boot size that are riding a snowboard that isn't wide enough. But sometimes it can be caused because your bindings aren't set up the right way. So today I'm gonna to talk about how to set up your heel cup properly if your binding has an adjustable heel cup. All right guys, so as you know, bindings are meant to accommodate various boot sizes, usually around three different boot sizes per binding size. So there has to be some adjustability with each binding. Pretty much all bindings have adjustable straps and an adjustable high back, but not all bindings have adjustable heel cups. And this is a feature that I think is really underrated and can really improve your experience snowboarding. So the goal with adjusting your heel cup is to make sure that your boot is centered over the footbed. So there's an even amount of toe hanging off the front of the binding and heel hanging off the back of the binding. And ideally we want as little overhang as possible. Now I'm riding a boot that is basically the smallest size boot you could put in this binding. And as you can see with the standard heel cup adjustment at level two, the heel is way too far to the back, which would cause a lot of heel drag and the toes not hanging over the front at all. So to fix this, we're going to adjust the heel cup and get the boot nice and centered over the footbed. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take off the heel strap and the heel ladder. This is gonna allow the heel cup to slide in and out of the binding's chassis. You'll wanna be using a Phillips head number three screwdriver. Typically, this is the size Phillips head that you'll wanna use for all snowboard binding adjustments, including mounting the bindings to your snowboard. Be careful once you take the straps off because there's a female piece on the inside of the binding that the straps screw into. And for union bindings, you actually don't have to take this female piece out to adjust the heel cup. So just keep an eye on it and make sure that it doesn't get lost as you're taking the binding apart. So now that you have the strap and the ladder off, you can go ahead and adjust the binding by pushing the heel cup into the chassis or pulling it out, depending on what you need to do. For me, the binding was already set to its largest setting, and I think going all the way into zero is gonna provide the best centering over the footbed for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that heel cup all the way into the chassis. Once you have the heel cup adjusted and you've checked to make sure that your boot is nice and centered over the footbed, you can go ahead and screw the strap and ladder back onto the binding just the same way that you took it off, nice and simple. Once you have the binding put back together, I would highly recommend taking your boot, putting it back in the binding and strapping it closed just to really make sure that it's nice and centered over the footbed. While you have it strapped in there, also make sure you don't need to adjust the straps. Ideally, we want the heel and toe strap centered over the boot as well. This is a great time to go ahead and adjust those, so once the time comes and you're out on the snow, you're 100% ready to ride. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that this video helps you out. If you want to check out this binding in a little more detail or some other bindings that have adjustable heel cups, check the description. We'll have a link down there for you to check out. I know that all of Union bindings, even their entry-level bindings, are going to have an adjustable heel cup as well as a lifetime warranty. And Arbor bindings are also going to have an adjustable heel cup. If you guys know of any other brands that offer adjustable heel cups, I'd be stoked if you let us know down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time.